Hey everyone, today Jesus talks more about money. Looking around, Jesus says to his disciples, it will be very hard for the wealthy to enter God's kingdom. His words startled the disciples, so Jesus told them again, children, it's difficult to enter God's kingdom. It's easier for a camel to squeeze through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter God's kingdom. They were shocked even more and said to each other, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them carefully and said, it's impossible with human beings, but not with God. All things are possible for God. Peter said to him, look, we've left everything and followed you. Jesus said, I assure you that anyone who has left house, brothers, sisters, mothers, father, children, or farms because of me and because of the good news will receive 100 times as much now in this life, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and farms with persecution, and in the coming age, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. So one thing to clarify that I know I've put it out before, but I think is always important is to understand that when Jesus talks about entering the kingdom, he's not talking about going to heaven when you die, right? It's less about where you're going to live then and more about how you live right here and right now, right? They, they go together. It's not excluding the other entirely, but we ought to focus on how we're living in this life. And what Jesus says about wealth is probably a little troubling to us, just like it was for the disciples. But I think we need to also understand that riches and possessions and stuff, it doesn't make God kick you out. He's just saying that it's kind of impossible, like logically, to live in a kingdom way where we're fully relying on God when we're actually relying on our own stuff. All right, it's less about who can be saved, as they ask, but who saves? You can't save yourself, even though that's a lot of times what we're trying to do by building up money and connections and knowledge and influence, right? Ultimately, those things are going to fall short, even though we think that they're going to protect us from disaster and death. And eventually what might happen with those things is that they build a barrier between us and the God who's trying to save us. Now, Peter and the other disciples are confused because they had always been taught that wealth was, a pro was proof of God's blessing and God's presence. And Jesus is saying it's actually the opposite. So, and also now Peter's confused and maybe frustrated because he's given up everything and he's kind of expecting a reward. And then at first, it sounds like Jesus is saying that's exactly what he'll get, right? It sounds like the prosperity gospel and riches in this life, right? He's very specific. But, you know, I don't remember Peter receiving hundreds of houses or children like Jesus says here. So maybe we should think of Jesus reevaluating what it means to actually be rich. That through his church, Jesus redefines family. You may not get a mansion here, but you can experience brothers and sisters who will share their homes and share their things with you when you need it. Right? We share our blessings. We, as the early church later does, have all things in common. Jesus' standard for being number one may not be what we expect. It may actually be the opposite. So, what kind of riches and what kind of salvation are you expecting today?